Your early hires at your e-commerce brand are crucial to get right. If everything goes well, you'll build a core team that sets the foundation for your future growth. But if it goes poorly, it costs you time, money, and momentum. Now, I've personally done a ton of hiring in previous roles and now as a founder myself. In fact, I've even consulted for a billion dollar company interviewing people that they were considering to bring in for a senior marketing role. So I have a lot of experience hiring. And in this video, I'll share five key tips to help you hire smart and scale fast. Firstly, you wanna hire for the key strengths that you don't already have. Instead of just focusing on potential or experience, focus on bringing in expertise that your current team or you as a founder currently lack. For example, if as a founder your strength is the product that you sell, then bring in somebody who can help with the marketing. Or if you're good at the marketing side, maybe you need somebody who can help with operations. While you might be tempted to hire somebody who just brings in capacity and can take stuff off your plate, it can be more helpful to bring in people who will actually complement your weaknesses, bringing in new skills altogether. Ideally, these individuals will have a certain amount of autonomy in the areas that you're giving them so they need to have the skills to be able to handle that. They shouldn't be looking to you as a founder for guidance or training so they should be fairly independent. Also keep in mind what's going to move the needle the most for your business at its current stage. For example, for most e-com brands that means good marketing but that also means understanding which channel is going to be the most impactful from a marketing strategy perspective. Which in turn means you often don't want to just hire a generalist. While they can usually do a little bit of everything that's often not enough to move the needle to any appreciable degree. If you know that your core marketing channel is Facebook ads, it's better to have a specialist who can help with that channel rather than a generalist who can also handle a little bit of SEO, a little bit of Google ads, etc. All right, so once you've identified what skills are going to be most impactful to bring into the organization, the next tip is to very clearly outline what that job role is going to look like today and into the future. One of the key steps here is to build out a very detailed job description. Part of that is so that you can basically take all of the thinking that you did in the first step and put that on paper and make sure it all coherently makes sense. But the other part Part is also so that you can attract the right people to apply to the job. Keep in mind, if you just dump a dense blob of text onto a job board, you're going to get applicants, but they're not necessarily going to be the best ones. So approach this from a sales and marketing perspective. Not only how do you attract the right people to look at the job, but then entice them to get excited about it and apply. Beyond the job description, you also want to be able to plan for what this role will look like in the future. For example, if the company scales really quickly, are you planning on replacing this person or might you hire somebody on top of them? You don't want to go through the process of hiring someone who's going to be so short live that you're going to outgrow them very fast. In that case, just hire a freelancer. On the other hand, if you do think that you would keep them long term, then what would you be doing to invest in their growth and development? Having a lot of these questions answered ahead of time will make it a lot easier for you to identify who the right candidate is from a screening and interviewing process perspective. So now let's say you posted your job, you've gotten a ton of applicants, and you've selected a bunch that you actually want to interview. What next? I won't go into the depth about all the stuff that you need to do to interview effectively because that's a video of its own. But for now, tip three is about focusing on the cultural fit of the individual. Individual. Especially in the early days when the team is small and you as a founder are very involved in the day-to-day -day operations, how well you fit culturally with the people you bring on is extremely important. On the one hand, you're not going to be managing these people aggressively with, through systems and procedures and reporting. You're going to want them to be autonomous. And so they have to have some amount of philosophical alignment with the way that you would approach things so that they can deploy their strengths and tackle problems the way that you would have. For example, if you like to be very communicative and organized and taking detailed notes, then you might not jive that well with a person who's a lone wolf, even if they're very skilled at what they do. They should also align very well with the brand's value. So for example, if you want to build a bit more of a premium brand that has a very good relationship with its customers, you wouldn't want to hire someone who's going to hammer them all day trying to send them promos and discounts. And at the end of the day, building a brand is a lot of work, but it's supposed to be fun. And it's a lot more fun if you're working with people that you actually vibe well with. Sometimes if you take a little bit of a hit on the skills, but you vibe much better with a particular individual, the net output of the team is going to be much stronger. But at the same time, one word of caution, don't get sucked in by somebody who just has a really good personality during the interviews. Some people have just done a fantastic job of cultivating the skill of interviewing, so don't mistake that for a person who's actually going to be competent. Make sure to dig into their technical skills, and doing an assessment before you hire somebody is never a bad idea. All right, so say you found someone you really like, now you got to get down to brass tacks and give them an offer to get them to join your business. The key tip here is that as a young brand, you're oftentimes not going to be able to afford the kinds of meaty salaries that bigger brands are going to be able to offer. This means that you're going to have to get creative to get the person excited. The kind a person who's attracted to work at an early stage brand is often going to be the type of person who gets excited about building things and seeing things reach their potential. So you can try to tap into that excitement by weighing their compensation more towards a performance bonus. If the performance targets are hit, the total compensation might be higher than the salary alone, but as a brand, it reduces your risk because if they're hitting their targets, then you're happy to pay more. And it'll often be appealing to the individual as well, because as an optimist, they're hoping they're going to be able to earn the whole thing. That's good because you want them to feel motivated and aligned to hit those targets, but you want to be cautious 
cautious to not make the target so unrealistic that they just end up getting disappointed and losing faith in the brand. I prefer performance bonuses for early hires over something like equity, but that option does also exist. The challenge with equity is that it's a bit more of a complex process to actually provide that as an option to people, and it's a little bit harder to know the correct amount of equity to give out when you don't have a lot of information about what the brand's potential is. Whereas performance bonuses are a lot easier to measure and calculate, and it's easier to make sure that the ROI is aligned with what you're actually paying the person. So once you have your offer, hopefully the person accepts and you want to set them up for success. How do we do that? The last tip is to invest thoughtfully in their onboarding as well as their training. Especially if you haven't been doing a lot of hiring, most founders don't really have any sort of robust onboarding process. That often means they'll just bring a person in, maybe have a one hour call with them in the beginning and then let them figure things out. Some people may thrive in a situation like that, but the vast majority of people don't find that easy to navigate. On top of that, even if they can navigate it, it's just very inefficient because they're going to spend a lot of time spinning their wheels. So even though you don't have any sort of formal onboarding process, the key thing is to just check in with them very frequently. Don't just tell them, hey, let me know if you need anything, because a lot of people don't feel comfortable asking questions in a new job because they don't want to come across like they don't know what they're doing. So check in very frequently. And if you can, try to set some expectations about where you expect them to have gotten to with respect to their work at certain points in time, like 30 days or 60 days. Depending on the role, you also want to be able to try to provide them as much training as possible. If you have very internal proprietary approaches and ways of doing things, you should train them on that. But when it comes to training that they need to do their job well, which are skills that you may not have because that's why you hired them, you want to maybe get external training for them. You can either buy courses or get them a membership to an external community so that they have other ways to fill in the gaps in their knowledge. For example, if they're in charge of marketing, there's a lot of new stuff and innovations in marketing, also just things that people don't know. If they can't go to you or anybody else in the company, they need somebody to bounce ideas off of and people to ask questions to. So a community can be very helpful for that. Very few people are going to be capable of coming in and being completely self-sufficient. So just minimize your risk as much as possible, over communicate and help them as much as you can. Now, while there's obviously a lot more depth to the hiring process, hopefully with those five tips, you can take a bit more of a conscientious approach to your early hires. These people are going to be the most impactful to whether or not your brand succeeds. So it's important to take this process very seriously. If you have any questions about hiring, feel free to leave them in the comments. In the meantime, you may also find this unbiased ranking of the main e-commerce strategies video helpful too. But besides that, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you next time.